All right, shalom, all praises due to y'all. Oh, in today's video, it's not going to be a long video. I'm going to go a little bit over this book, which is something that um, uh, which I'm sure the majority of Israelites are familiar with this book from Babylon to that book too. It is like one of the one, two goals of all the different camps that's out there. For the most part, they have this book in their possession and they'll suggest all their followings to pretty much get this book immediately. And the only page that they read is page 84 in regards of over a million Jews going into Africa fleeing from, from Roman persecution. And what they'll do is every time you see them reading that particular page is they'll close the book immediately. But they will not go to other parts of the book that totally contradicts the doctrines because they're all teaching that Hispanics and Native Americans are Israel. They also subscribe to that 12 tribe chart. But when you study Rudolf R. Windsor, you're going to find out that he was teaching even till this day that all the Israelites and all 12 tribes are black, the northern and the southern kingdom. So I'm going to I'm going to go to page 131. I don't want to make this video too long. And I want to show you something. In regards of the Yoruba Jews of Nigeria. Now, I do not subscribe to the old notion that the sub-Saharan West Africans are Israel, such as the Ebors, the Yorubas, the Ashanti, and so on and so forth. But that's not what this video is about. So I'm going to read this over here. And it says there are black Jews in southern Nigeria who are called the Emo Yo Kwaim or strange people by the native Africans. But these black Jews call themselves by the Hebrew name Beni Ephraim. So on page 131, Rudolf O. Windsor is already let is already let you know that the Ephraimites who are also from the Northern Kingdom or the Ten Tribes are black. But based upon the false 12 tribe chart, they got the Puerto Ricans being listed as being from the tribe of Ephraim. But these cats, all these different congregations and pagan false camps that's out there, they love to go to page 85, but they will not read page 131. Because, you know, they don't want to defend their congregations. They don't want to defend the heathen Hispanics and Native Americans in their camps. They will never show this to their congregations or the majority of the people that's viewing them. You see that? I'm going to go to another one. I'm going to go to another page that they don't want to read to their audience. I'm going to go to page 92 in regards of Eli the Danite. And it says in the ninth century, in the ninth century, a black African Hebrew arrived in the city of Karam in Algeria. He says a black African Hebrew. And this is, and this city was one of the famous Talmudic schools. The name of this Hebrew was who? Heli the Danite, who described as being a black person or a black Hebrew. Now you got a lot of these camps who are teaching that the tribe of Dan are either the Mongoloid, Carib, and, um, and the Arawak Carib of the Caribbeans. But based upon the information that Rudolf O. Windsor brought forth to the table, he was teaching that the Danites, the Northern and the Southern Kingdom, and all of the tribes were black. You see, every time these camps be utilizing all these different books, all these different materials, and all these different sources, it cuts the very premise on their own doctrine. And they don't even realize that. They will only read page 84, but they will not read page 131, no page one, or page 92. And this about a bitch. I'm gonna go to another page. I'm gonna go to page um, uh, 106 or 107. Let me see. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to start over here. Page 107. And it says that the Hebrew Phoenician language and culture were invigorated and strengthened by the deportation and the migration energetic black Hebrews from Palestine. So he's let you know over here again that all 12 tribes are black. I'm going to jump down over here. During the Punic Wars and after North Africa contained a large Hebrew population, this Hebrew population made converts and intermarried with who? With the Canaanites and the native Africans. And on page 106, it says that all the Canaanites were black. So if the Hebrew man intermarried and had seeds with the Canaanite and the black African woman, then who the hell are these quote unquote so-called Hispanics and Native Americans, pale faced looking people in these different congregations claiming to be Israelites when all 12 tribes were Negroes and all 12 tribes were black? You see that? I'm going to jump down in regards of Hannibal in the city of Carthage. In the ruins of Carthage, archaeologists have found about 4,000 inscriptions in the ancient language of who? Of Canaan. I'm going to go straight down to the point. It says, according to some inscriptions, it says that the Hebrew tribe of Asher and Zebulon were where in Carthage. So you had Canaanites that were dwelling in Carthage. But he's let you know over here that the black Hebrews or the Hebrews were black. And over here, he's let you know that you had the tribe of Asher and Zebulon who were dwelling in Carthage, which were also black people. But the camps will never go into any of these informations to show you that all the Israelites and all 12 tribes were black. You notice on now he's not referring to the Hebrews as being black Hispanic Hebrew Israelites or black Hispanic Native American Hebrews. He's let you know based upon his information that all Israelites and all Jews were black. I'm going to go to page 109. And it says, at this time in the land of Spain, the white, the black Jews were persecu persecuted and many have fled to Morocco for refuge. As a result of this persecution, the Jews of Morocco and the Moors planned to invade Spain with the assistance of the Spanish Jews. In the meantime, the plot was uncovered and the Jews of Spain suffered for their intention. Early in the 8th century, the Mohammedans from Morocco united with all the black Jews again, made with what we call an amphibious landing at Gibraltar. This invasion was successful. Nahum Slush says that the first one to set foot on the soil of Spain was General Tari, who was what a Jew of the tribe of Simeon. Over here, he's let you know that all the Jews are black, including the Simeonites. But according to these camps, they're saying that the pale faced Dominicans are from the tribes of Simeon. But when you read page 131, 92, 106, 107, 108, and 109, he's let you know that the, that the Southern Kingdom are black. When you read all throughout his book from Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar to Rudolf O. Windsor, is let you know based upon his information that all Israelites were and are black. But according, but if you check out the rest of these different camps out there, they just love to read page one eighty, uh, uh, page eighty four. They would not go to all the other pages that I just read right now, because every time they be utilizing these um uh, different sources, it pretty much cuts to all their falsehood and all their false ideologies that they're trying to convey to the audience. So with that, I'm gonna sign out. Told you it was going to be a short video, and I'm going to say shalom.